Welcome to the Pitcher Naildown. I'm Jason Gilbo. With me is Nick Tasso breaking down tonight's pitching starting at 707. It is not a pretty pitching slate for this night's slate. Um, it's a lot of mediocrity. Yeah, I agree with you. This is probably one of the worst 707 starts I've ever seen with starting pitchers. So uh, not too happy about this. And maybe we can talk about some bad guys just for fun. Oh, there's a lot. Derek Holland, uh, Travis Wood, um, Homer Bailey, Rick Porcello Rick sucks. Rick. I honestly think though Porcello is going to have an okay um, outing because Toronto really hasn't been that good offensively. So I think he's not going to be too bad. But yeah, definitely don't use him. No, he's going to have to rebound. But yeah, he's definitely not a guy on my radar. So, um, in terms of top options, you're, you're taking a look at Jose Quintana. Um, I don't think his price is all that bad on tonight's slate. Once again, I feel like a lot of these guys, I'm going to say this, I do wish they were cheaper. Um, just because Quintana has been kind of a little up and down uh, really since joining the Cubs, I guess overall this season. Yeah, absolutely. He, uh, I think he's missing his mentor, Chris Sale. Um, so that's probably affected him a little bit. But like you said, he's not really good. His price tag is a little bit high. But I really like the matchup here. Um, we know he can throw deep into games, even if he's not effective. But here, I think his strikeout uh, potential against these Pirates might really uh, benefit him here. Yeah, I definitely don't mind the matchup. I mean, really outside of Andrew McCutcheon, there's not a lot of right-handed bats that really scare me um, off Quintana in this one, and he should get plenty of run support. I'm certainly okay with it. And as you said, I mean, really, he does still work, you know, fifth, six innings, you know, even if his, his games are bad, obviously. Look at his last start against the Phillies. It was a bit of a down one, but um, I guess my, my my concern is, you know, he's been walking a ton of guys. Um he has 10 walks over his last three starts, but I mean, outside of that, I don't think there's really all that much to worry about with Quintana. I think in terms of other options up there, I mean, there's kind of a, a red flag next to a lot of these names. Oh yeah. I'm not super thrilled with probably anyone we talk about today. So uh, take all these with a grain of salt. Yeah. So um, Dallas Keuchel, he's a guy who just really hasn't looked great since coming back from the injury. Um, he did have that good start against Texas, which is obviously appealing here because he's facing Texas. This game's also at Tropicana Field because of the hurricane, so he does get a little bit of a bump with the park boost. Um, Texas is awful against lefties. You know, they're bottom half in Woba and ISO, 24% strikeout rate. But, I mean, Keiko outside the ground ball, you know, rate, it's, it's up over 60% this year. Over his last few starts, I mean, the strikeouts really haven't been there. Um, I don't know. We just haven't really seen a ton of upside. I mean, I know you got you went through seven against Oakland. It was fine, but only three strikeouts. Um, you know, I still kind of want more out of Keiko at these prices. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, he's not um, super cheap. He's the highest guy on the slate, and against this offense, he could be in trouble. But like you said, this ballpark might benefit him a little bit um, better. So I, I kind of don't mind rostering him. It just might be tough because he is priced so high. And he's really not paying off um, where he's at right now. No, he's not. There's some other guys with higher strikeout upside. I mean, let's talk Jose Barrios. You and I both like him. He might be my favorite option, actually, on this slate. Uh, nine strikeouts last time out against Chicago. We had eight in a prior start against them. Um, this is a, a Chicago team that, you know, obviously struggles against right-handed pitching. And Barrios has been much better at home. Yeah, he doesn't really go deep in the game sometimes, and he kind of gives up some runs. But like you said, that strikeout potential is always there with him. Um, and, and this depleted Chicago lineup really can strike out a lot, which is evident from his last start against him. So I definitely like him here. He's not priced too egregiously, so I kind of am okay with it. Um, plus, with everyone else around him, I mean, he's actually in a good price point. Yeah, I think so, too. I think he's kind of justified given the fact that the upside's there for him, and then we haven't really seen it out of Quintana or Keiko of late. Um, but I do I do like him. I mean, huge favorite of target field uh, with Derek Holland on the other side. That one, he should get plenty of run support. So, you know, say he does give up three to four runs over, you know, five, six innings or so, I, I still think the win will be there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, he's in a good shot to get a win. Like you said, he's been much better at home, so hopefully that benefits him here as well. Yeah. Uh, Robbie Ray, you know, he's a guy who obviously a tougher matchup against uh, Los Angeles, um, you know, at home in Chase Field where we've seen, you know, Ray obviously struggle at times this year in terms of the hard contact. Uh, things start to dip a little bit, but uh, there's definitely strikeout upside here. I mean, he's had 29 strikeouts against the Dodgers over three starts this season. Yeah, absolutely. And 13 in his last one. Um, obviously, that was at Dodger Stadium. So it 
it's a little bit easier to uh, pitch him there. But uh, I like him, obviously. I mean, it's hard not to with who else is around him. Um, so I'd roster him tonight, um, and I'd be kind of happy about it just because I feel like he'd be in a good chance to get a win, too, since the Diamondbacks' bats are also facing a lefty, uh, which always benefits them. So I'd roster him. I'm not a hu- uh, super comfortable with it, but, again, the slate, you just have to do things that you're not happy with. Yeah, and you kind of like, I mean, you know, if, say, we get the usual Dodgers lineup where the lefties are in there, I mean, against lefties this year, 39% strikeout rate, 2.15 xFIP. Um, he's really shut down lefties, and I think, like you said, I mean, you know, on the road, Ray would obviously be a much better play, but at home, just kind of given the slate of options, you know, I, I don't mind going there because Ray could easily be the highest scoring pitcher at the end of the night. Yeah, he really could, um, just because he does have that huge strikeout potential. Uh, and, yeah, he might give up a run or two, but like you said, he could neutralize those lefties and get a lot of strikeouts. Yeah, definitely. You know, obviously there's some risk given the fact that the Dodgers, you know, they're not the pushover team against lefties that they once were. They're top five in Woba and ISO, but um, the 22% strikeout rate against lefties, I mean, you know, the Dodgers team can't provide upside. Yep, Absolutely. So uh, outside of that, um, we kind of drop into some lower end options. Let's head out to Los Angeles, um, you know, featuring two pitchers or two offenses that are pretty subpar. Um, you like Kendall Grave in here. Yeah, absolutely. The ballpark's definitely going to help him a little bit. And I mean, we've seen Graveman over the past few years have uh, really bad starts, but also really good starts. He doesn't have a huge strikeout upside, um, but if Mike Trout's out again, obviously that helps him out and he kind of could limit the damage. That's the only thing with him. Sometimes he doesn't really limit the damage and he gets into trouble pretty early and then gets taken out and never has any uh, potential for strikeouts. But I mean, this slate really isn't that great. So, I mean, you have to dig deep on this one. Yeah, I mean, I I don't mind him here. Um, well, he's pitched pretty well against Los Angeles this year. Um, he's averaged 18 DK points, which I think that's probably the only spot that I like to use him is on DK. Um, yeah, I, you know, against the Angels, like you said, if Mike Trout's out there, obviously makes it easier to deploy. And, you know, you look at some of these guys around him, there's probably maybe two or three guys that you know we'll talk about here now that you can use outside of him who's below 8K. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely in an SP2 kind of situation, GPP. And like you said, there there are a few other guys who you could kind of really interchange um, in your roster tonight. Yeah. I think the other one, uh, Parker Bridwell, he's not – He's not good. Um, you know, he's he's very average. Um, A's obviously over the last 30 days have, you know, been decent. They're okay against right-handed pitching. The strikeout rate's obviously high, about 25%. Um, Bridwell, I mean, you know, obviously he looks great on paper, 7-2, and two, you know, under a 3 ERA. But, you know, just a 39% ground ball rate, 4.83 xFIP. Um, you know, he's, he's pretty solid because he doesn't walk guys. Um, but outside of that, I mean, things will start to catch up with them eventually. I just, I just don't see it kind of happening this start with given the fact that Oakland in this big ballpark, um, I can kind of see Bridwell continuing his lucky success. Yeah. He's kind of a red herring to me. I think eventually, like you said, he's going to uh, be shown for what he really is. He's not really that good. Um, I think this start right here is going to save him a little bit because it is against Oakland and it is at home. So I kind of uh, sort of agree with you. Uh, but again, not a safe option. Um, it's never good when you have to talk about Parker Bridwell. No, definitely isn't. And, I mean, uh, Jason Vargas was the only other name for me um, that kind of stood out. And, you know, he shouldn't stand out, but he did. And that's one. I mean, the Rays are awful against lefties, 27th and Woba, 26% strikeout rate. Obviously, the last 30 days have been bad. Um, Vargas is interesting because he, you know, obviously had a strong start to the season, and he's been pretty much in poor form since then, uh, especially of late. But I mean, you know, he's faced Boston, he's faced Baltimore, he's faced Cleveland um, back to back starts. I mean, it's kind of a tough schedule over his last five, six starts. Um, I, this is more of a matchup in ballpark play than it is a pitcher play. I think for me, I, I can see Vargas having a decent outing, um, and that's 6,900 is an SP2. You know, we've seen the 20-plus DK point upside out of him before. Um, it, it happens every now and then. You just got to be hoping that this is it. Yeah, and it's a little bit more uh, frequently than the Eclipse, so I don't mind Vargas here. Uh, like you said, Tampa Bay has just been so bad the last month or so. 
Also, against lefties, they're not very good because they have a bunch of lefty hitters in there. And then they're one of their best hitters, uh, Souza, isn't that good against lefties. He can hit righties really well. Um, so, I mean, if I'm Vargas, I really only concern myself with Longoria and, like you said, good ballpark form. So, I think things might sway Vargas's way tonight. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, outside of that, I mean, was there anyone that caught your eye? Uh, caught my eye to stack against. Yeah, so pitchy, no. No. I mean, I really do think that Porcel is going to put a decent outing. I mean, he's been better on the road this year. Uh, the, uh, Toronto really hasn't played as well in uh, recent weeks. So I kind of think that uh, Porcel is a sneaky play. The good thing about Porcel is, I mean, he's an innings eater outside of his last one because he was horrible in his last start. But, um, I mean, before that, he wasn't bad. Uh you know, if he was a thousand dollars cheaper, sure. You know, I, I think we can get center. Eighty-seven hundred is just too cheap or uh, too expensive for me. Um, I just rather drop below eight k. Yeah, no, I can totally see that. Um, I don't even mind Jay Happ too, and I know I crapped on him last uh, time we talked about uh, his start, but I don't know the Red Sox. Sometimes they just kind of go quiet. Yeah, I mean Hamley hasn't really been the same. Mookie hasn't really been the same this year. Chris Young's not hasn't been a lefty matcher that we've seen in the past. So uh, if Brett Anderson can get through uh, some innings against them, then Hap certainly can. Yeah. I like Brett Anderson. He reminds right. me of Brian Anderson. Remember when there was two Brian Andersons? Brian L. Anderson? No. Cleveland in Arizona? No. All righty. All right. Sorry. Wrong pitching pod. <laughs> well, we're, you know what? That sums up the pod right there. We're going to wrap it up. You know, you're making analysis that no one knows. Yeah, 2001. Oh, we're digging deep. Yeah. All right. Yep. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, you can head over to DaveFastTheCafe.com, check out the great tools and content.